Okay, it might be 6.59, it might be 7.01. We're starting this thing. How are you guys? Tell me that you're here. Tell me where you're tuning in from. And if you're on the replay, do it anyway. I love seeing my replay uh, watchers. Start a watch party. Share this with your friends. And make sure to hit that button, get all notifications for when Die to Spin is live so that you never miss another Sat or Die Night Live. Hey, Jamie. So, the hair is going up soon. I'm already sweating to the oldies. I'm glad I got my little sweat towel here. We're gonna look at the skeins of yarn that we dyed last night for the Yarn Dyeing 101 because they're dry. One of them is gorgeous. <laughs> we dyed two last night. One of them is lovely. The other one is solid white elephant gift material. Um, yeah. And so I've got one crock pot on, the other two are gonna be on momentarily, and I've planned everything out for our jewel tones. Hey, Wanda, our jewel tones, earth tones, and water tones. I just made up water tones. Blue might be an earth tone. Kirsten's here, hello. So um, yeah, so let's kind of, let me look at my little notes. Yeah, start your watch party and then get all notifications that Die to Spin is live and tag some friends in the comments below because these are all public. So if you have some yarny friends, tag them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, happy Saturday to you too. Thank you for reminding me what day it is because um, not every day do I know what day it is. All right. Um, yeah, so let's start with just a few quick um, little we're going to look at the yarn we dyed last night. Like I just said, one of them is gorgeous. And then we're going to, I just realized that the next virtual fiber fest is um, this time next week. <laughs> I still thought I had like three weeks left. No. So I'm going to flip you guys around and uh, we're going to take a look here. All right. So virtual starting on the 13th and then my slot is the 14th 4 p.m eastern which is 3 p.m central so mark your calendars i would love to have my own personal like cheer section um and of course people saying like how funny my jokes are etc etc so please um tune in it's gonna be if you just search virtual fiber fest on facebook there's going to be i'm sure like a i hope like a business page so just tune in the whole two days are jam-packed with indie dyers little yarn shops i mean all the yarn um how do i keep this friendly family friendly all the yarn salivating that you could ever want all jam-packed into one weekend and like i said even if you just even if you just want to watch it's super fun so i try to keep my uh videos educational so that you don't feel pressured to watch now or, uh, <laughs> feel pressured to watch yes uh 14th kirsten june the 14th hello kelly yeah pressured to watch for sure pressured to buy never um look how cute my latest little stitch markers, watermelons. <laughs> and I just have this little clasp on here just as a tester outer to see, because look, you can actually take it off and on. You guys know what these are. Um, and Kirsten, remember I'm a teacher, so I'm used to like students asking questions just, you know, and I just said what the information was and I don't judge them, right? Kiwi! Look how cute the kiwis are. I might keep one of these for myself. I should have kept one of the fried eggs for myself last week and last month. So these are going to be the little free stitch markers. And I bought so many more because the Saturday, the Saturday night live next week will be the day before my slot. And I'll probably do another like fan appreciation type thing. Yeah, watermelon colorway. Here's the reason why I would not want to. And I'm just like letting you into my brain, Kelly is because if I dyed it up and called it a watermelon colorway, I would want so desperately for it to knit up 
and look like a watermelon. Do you know what I'm saying? Like the rind and then the light part and then the seeds with the red. I would want so desperately to make that and I'm not exactly sure how to do that. This has been a struggle for so many years for me. <laughs> but I can do whatever I wanted, right? I'm a yarn dyer. Look at this gorgeous one. You guys were with me last night. This is our, you know, like unnamed uh, Santa Fe. Isn't that so gorgeous? Look at that right there. We knew that this was going to be looking really good. The copper turned into more of an orange, but y'all, I'm okay with that. And I love how the light and the dark. Oh, yay, Janica. I am so glad that you are in love with that yarn. Yeah, this is last night's yarn, Kelly. So yeah, Wilton Dye, who knew? Not me. Um, and again, like when the copper comes in with this teal, so you guys are gonna help me figure out what the semi-solid should be for this because I really wanna make it into a Casapinka pattern a yarn pairing. Here's my initial thought. Go with earth tones. Um, and the reason why I think this is because this pink is pretty strong. The teal is pretty strong. But what I also know about the Casa Pinka pattern, I'm gonna show you my Ron and Hermione forever. The lighter the semi-solid, like this light pink is the semi-solid, so the lighter the semi-solid, the more the colorway pops. So this is a great way to show that. And then of course I also have my, um, my God of Thunder, but I really think that I wanna draw out some of this really light, the lighter of the copper or what do y'all think of trying to make like a, a dye stock where it's kind of a copperish and burgundy mix and sometimes colors are weird when you put two colors in the same jar and you mix them really well in the fiber you'll still see the two different colors the sand color kelly okay so the tan i know that green is wonderful too this is the dyer's conundrum, deciding which color is best for which pairing. I really want to see what this light burgundy mixed with, and I'm, I'm saying like go easy on it. And what I'm going to show you guys tonight is how to test a color when it's still in the jar before it hits your yarn to see if it's what you want. So let's just play around a little bit with that. So that'll be one of our yarns as the semi-solid. And this one's gonna be a little bit discounted. It's not gonna be as um, the same price as my other Casa Pinka pairings for this blend of yarn, only because it's a Wilton dye. So it does not guarantee any sort of color fastness or light fastness. Color fast is you can wash it and it won't fade. Light fast is you can wear it for years in the sun, why would you wear a wool shawl in the sun? I don't know, don't ask me. And it won't fade. So I can't guarantee this with the Wilton dyes. Um, so I'm thinking it's definitely going to be a, um, a, a more affordable price. And remember, these are two 50 gram skeins dyed together, so there's gonna have to be a tie-in. But, there's gonna be a lot of weaving in ends anyways, y'all, on this Casa Pinka pattern, because you can you switch from one color to the next, and at times, you do break the yarn in the middle of the pattern. So I talked, I was kind of bouncing back and forth. Sorry about that. Free giveaway of these cutie little stitch markers next weekend. Kiwi and watermelon, aren't they so cute? And then also, I found nine patterns from Lori Beardsley that I want to give away to the first nine people um, who order next weekend. It'll be, there'll be more details next weekend. So just know that next weekend only, I will be giving away free patterns. One of them is a pattern. She's so smart, y'all. She's a mathematical engineer. One of them is a pattern that you can select any weight of yarn 
and then she lets you um, figure out how to like how many to cast on, what size needles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the other one, this is a discontinued dye to spin colorway called uh, Raising, no, called Sugar and Spice. God, long ago when I was making this colorway. <laughs> uh, Miles was like one when I was making this colorway. That's how long ago it was because he's now almost six. Okay. Oh, y'all want to see the white elephant yarn? White elephant. Dun, 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 dun. This was the one that we kind of, we meaning me, kind of just, I really should have thought about what I was doing more. The reason why, um, I'm unsatisfied with it is because I knew right when I put the Kool-Aid powder in that I should have put the yarn in first. I would have had way more control over the color movement. The purple is nice. Remember we went in with the Wilton's dyes and I think it'll probably be better when it's knit up into something. I mean, this rust color is kind of cool, but I mean, come on now. These are not to be compared and they weren't supposed to be the exact same thing. All right. Y'all look at this real quick. Hey, Belinda, I'm going to put my hair up and um, wipe my face because it's like dripping wet. So I'm out in my garage, of course, y'all know, and um, it's a little hot. If you're, for, if you're uh, tuning in for the very first time, please don't be shy. We're all really nice people. Say that you're here and tell us where you're from. Oh, wiping it off got to put the hair up. Y'all just look at this and think about what semi-solid I should do with this yarn here. Although, who am I kidding? I've already kind of put out my dies for the semi-solid. So we will do our little testing of the colors in the jar. And I'll show you how to do some color testing and we will just see what we come up with my friends so i've got out the copper and the burgundy which i think we also agreed shouldn't be called burgundy yeah see total garage style <laughs> hey carol good to see you i saw you last week on uh, when we were at juju online on zoomy zoom Okay, so the burgundy and the copper. We're gonna test it out a little bit because remember, we're wanting to make our semi-solid with this. And it's hard to choose the color. There's so many good ones in here. What we're gonna do, and remember, this is a gel and it's food safe, so I don't have to have my mask on. We are going to, I've got a jar here. Sorry about the label. We're just gonna put a little tiny bit. And that's a lot actually, because what I've learned about these icing dyes and you've learned along with me is that they are potent. So I'm just gonna mix this around and they need hot water is what I'm learning right this minute. So I'm gonna just add a little hot water to get this mixing. So what are you guys up to tonight other than watching this? It has been hot. I was building the chicken coop all day today in the backyard. For those of y'all who saw that little picture of my baby chickies at the Virtual Fiber Fest back in May, May 3rd, they are like quadruple, maybe even five times their size. It's just kind of crazy. All right, so we got that burgundy, which a lot of us agreed last night was more of a pink. And I have a little sheet of paper towel that's ripped in half here for color testing. So I put in my burgundy, now I'm gonna do my copper Always put the lids back on your dyes, especially the powders. 
I'm almost thinking that this is going to be more of a rust color with the orange and pink together. That's what it's starting to look like. And I really do want to go light. And you know what? I'm cheating because there's already pink. Y'all know how I cannot just toss out water. I think that keeping dye solution or dye stock like in the pot like that just gives the uh, added color. Man, Kirsten, you're painting everything in your backyard. Didn't you paint the shed last week or something? And in this heat, friend, although who am I to talk? I was feeding ice cubes to the chickies because they were out there with me in their little playpen outside. All right, so most of my dye is off of my measuring spoon. It's in my jar. So from here, it's really hard to tell what it is. So what you do is you get your little napkin. And of course, I really, I know that I'm not gonna dip this whole thing in there. So, all right. It's a little lighter than what I want. So I just keep adding to it. Because when I look at the skein, which is really a good idea of what you have to do, I'd be getting this, and I think that's just a little too light. I wanna go more. We're gonna go a little more burgundy because I'm noticing that it looks way more copper. So who else? Who else did some things today? And tonight we're just gonna be dyeing the 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon Sock Weight Yarn. It's great for socks, but it also makes incredible shawls, hard wearing. Could I use a crock pot liner if I just wanted to do a one-time dye test and want to be able to reuse the pot? Wanda, as long as you are using food safe dyes, you don't have to use a crock pot liner. So Wanda, tell me, are you using professional acid dyes or are you using Wilton's or Kool-Aid or food coloring drops? Tell me what you're planning on using. All right, another paper towel test. Boy, it's still that real light. And the one of the reasons why I'm really hesitant on adding more when the yarn is in there is because Whenever I would have to do it in a dye stock anyways, take the yarn out, put it in to make a nice even semi-solid. So I'm gonna put in more burgundy. I'm gonna be a little more bold. Oh. You can always add more, Ashley. Yes, I know, self. Y'all talk to yourselves. You have a drunk yarn kit that you want in a drawing drunk yarn. Do you know what kind of dyes they're, they've got? Drunk yarn. I've never heard of it. So tell me. And of course, Wanda, you know, you can always send me a picture of the actual dye. And because if you're not sure um, what kind of dye it is, You helped your nine-year-old make a board game. That's fun, Janica. All right, a little more copper, and then I think we're gonna be, because another trick, whenever we have yarn in the pot, if we're like, okay, this is enough, this is enough, we take it out, even if there's yarn left over. So yeah, Wanda, if you can figure out what kind of dye you've got, if it's food safe, you can use your crock pot again. 
The liner, I'm sure, is fine if you really just wanted to be extra careful because the liner is meant to heat up anyway. I have no idea about the interactions with vinegar or citric acid with those liners. So you might wanna do a little test, Wanda, or anyone else considering using a uh, crock pot liner. But y'all, if you're using professional acid dyes and that liner is compromised and that dye stop touches your crock pot, I wouldn't recommend using it again, using it again for food. The kit is by Round Mountain Fibers. Okay, yeah, I'd love to see it because that sounds like super fun. Okay, let's do one last little paper towel test. Okay, I got a little more deeper and what I can do now is pour it in to my pinkish dye bath that was just waiting for more color. And I am also going to put you guys up so you can start seeing things from up high. Thanks for telling me everything that y'all are doing this weekend. It's super fun to know what you guys are up to. All right, here's our bath. It looks really dark, doesn't it? Here's something that I'm noticing. And here's something that I just know. We need more water in here. We're doing a semi-solid, so we want the yarn to flow. We want the colors to be all over the place because it's one color that we're looking for. So I want more coverage. I want the yarn to just be able to go in there, float around. And because I don't have access to a sink at the moment, I'm just using my water that I've been soaking the yarn in. And yes, it does kind of make the, the water a little bit cooler, but that is quite all right. Now, here's what I'm gonna do. I am also going to squeeze out the yarn. Because you don't want like dripping wet yarn. I mean, all in all, this is a semi-solid, so it's not gonna make that much of a difference. But you don't want dripping wet yarn going into the pot. It'll just sit there and kind of like be saturated and not soak up that, that color. Now, one of my little ends just fell in. That's pretty. Okay, this is what I'm gonna also do whenever I'm testing out a new color. You foster kittens, Christina? Oh yes, it's kitten season, isn't it? Yes, Janica, I, I reuse the water. Uh, here's something y'all can't tell anybody else, okay, ready? I, I reuse the water until I see mold on the top and then I toss it out. <laughs> All right, not bad. Okay, I want this whole skein to be one color. And I think it's gonna be pretty gorgeous, y'all. So I'm just kind of swishing it around. You guys have a really good view at the moment. And remember, mark your calendars, June 14th, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central for the Virtue Wool Fiber Fest. I am not above begging for a cheering section. I'm not above it. And I'd love to see y'all there, really, just as friends. So we pull it out and we know that this is gonna be lighter in color when it's dry. Yeah, you know what? Facebook decided to like me tonight. I'm telling y'all, it's like every other time. I'm sideways and it's like, don't, don't turn your phone while recording. Got some choice words before I go live when it does that to me. But this is a family friendly show. All right, I'm liking it. I'm gonna get the skein and kind of compare a little bit. What I don't want is a completely different color than what is in the skein already. 
And unfortunately, I'm just a little concerned that that might be happening. I wanna go more copper. All right, so here's what we do. This is why we have these random little things just waiting to hold yarn. We're gonna put this yarn in this little glass thing. These were from my wedding. They held like candles or something. And no, I'm not a hoarder. I save things that have a specific use. All right, more copper just right in the bath. And I don't want to do speckles or variegated, like light and dark, or even like multicolored, because I know that this shawl is going to sing with a very calm yarn as the semi-solid, and then a vibrant, beautiful, multicolored colorway. And we already know that we have that with this Santa Fe color, right? We know we have vibrant, light and dark, contrasting colors, complementary colors, it's like all in there. So now I need something that will work well with it, but let it shine. It's like a good dance team director. Goes backstage and does her thing to make sure everything else is gonna, running good and then of course like Time to shine for the dance team. I had an amazing dance team teacher in high school. So I think this will be nice. I'm really paying a lot of attention to this one, y'all, because, yeah, that's nice. Because this is the first time I've ever done this. This will get darker as I leave it in, but it's pretty much all absorbed. So I have a feeling that this will be pretty true to what the finished color will be. And let's just put it up against one more time. Gosh, I'm really being finicky about this. Well, one good thing is I got a box of about 400 skeins of undyed yarn today. So if this one doesn't work out, we'll find another, we'll find another skein to dye up. And if it does work out, you'll see it in my Etsy shop in T minus 12 hours. Cause it's so hot out here that yarn dries in like 10 minutes. Okay. That was our earth tone. Yay. <laughs> Y'all are such troopers. Okay. We're gonna do, oh, nuts. Okay, I shouldn't have done that because what we are having in this one is one of my colorways called Piercing Blue Eyes. This is just basically going to be, um, oh, you know what? Let's do another, no, let's, I have a very vocal mind and so you guys can pretty much hear all the thoughts that are in my head. Um, as they happen. Okay, Christina, two of the dyers had to re-dye skeins for me because they sold out. I still giggle when I say virtual, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, virtual fiber fest is just so much fun. All right, so for, for piercing blue eyes, this is gonna be my water tones. I developed this one years ago when little buddy was still a little teeny tiny infant. So we need cold, still water. And we're gonna put the dye in and then lay the yarn on top, which is why I already squeezed out the water. Now, this was the flub last night. This was what got us white elephant yarn. The water was steaming hot and I used Kool-Aid. So two, two very important factors. So I've got my three colors here. They are all from the blue family. And I'm going to uncap them right now. I'm going to get my little wiping rag ready to wipe in between colors. And my yarn is ready to lay on top after those colors are in there. 
Are you willing to sell some undyed yarn? Of course, Belinda. Sounds like you just need a, like a yarn dyeing 101 kit because in the yarn dyeing 101 kit, there's undyed yarn. And if, if you want to do the intermediate, I have a beginner and an intermediate and I'm developing an advanced yarn dyeing 101 kit. Um, it's on my Etsy shop, so just go to the Etsy shop and take a look. And I've got it at $39 right now, which includes the kit and the Zoom meeting with me. So that's a steal of a deal because after virtual on the 14th, I'm going up on that price. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you just want an advanced dye kit or um, an intermediate, it's a different blend of wool. It's actually a sock superwash um, two-ply sock yarn with like 400 yards in it for the intermediates. But for the beginners, it's the um, worsted non-super wash wool. Okay, let's do the dyeing. So I put the color in, I say a little prayer about it staying still and it's staying still. Y'all remember last night? that color like ran. So this is the difference between still cold water and hot water. All right. And I didn't wear my masks. Ooh. Actually just forgot. I'm gonna cap those later, lay it in. Okay, you'll see that the yarn is still peeking out. So this is what I do. I just push it down and encourage the color to come to the top and play around a little bit. Water level on something like this is crucial that it's in the middle of being low and high. You don't want your yarn to be sunk to the bottom of your crock pot, but you don't want the yarn also completely breaking the surface. Okay, here's another trick. I need more of this color here. So I'm gonna just go in with not too much now, and I'm gonna immediate, ah, crap. <laughs> I just sprinkled some of my dye on the, my undyed yarn in the bowl. Okay, hey, it's all in good fun. At this point in my dyeing career, I can totally say that was intentional. I'm gonna show y'all what I'm talking about. That right there, dun da da da. All right, so let's get these capped for safety. Let's let this be alone. I mean, look how gorgeous that color movement is. You bought way too much at Virtual, Laura. Yeah, you have no regrets about good yarn, y'all. The world needs good yarn. And there's so many great dyers and so many great little yarn shops. And the reason why I wanna do Saturday Night Live so often, on high, is so that you can have some yarn experience not feel obligated to buy or pay for it and just have fun with me. Okay, let me show you what I did. You guys are gonna be in on a little die to spin secret. The other day, I ripped out an entire sock and, oops, and so it was all like ramen noodly, right? And then I soaked this in, um, cause this was a sock, okay? Not this whole skein, but half of it was a sock. It was all ramen noodly. I soaked it in hot soapy water, hung it up, and now it's perfect. But see now it needs a, it needs a semi-solid cause this is gonna be a Casapinka pairing as well. So keeping with the rule of having like, like a nice light, color to make the colorway really stand out, I need to be careful when I'm choosing what to pair this with. I really like this light periwinkle. So I'm actually gonna do that here. 
And then you'll see this one in the shot. This is Pesky Pixie, by the way. You probably recognize it. But see, it was not, this was the very first, I know why this was so special. It's just now coming to me. This was the very first self-striping skein of yarn that I dyed last summer. And it was not in my Magical Swirl colorway. I hadn't figured that out yet. And so I will never repeat this again because I don't know how what I did. <laughs> so I figured, you know, undo the sock, put it in a Casapinka pairing, it's gorgeous, and I don't have a pesky pixie available for ca for the Casapinka hug shot shawl, so I was like, why not? So let's do it. Okay. Already pre-existing in the pot is some exhaust from, I was dying some gone viral, and so there's some like little reminiscence of hot pink and a little reminiscent of some like dark gray. But I know that this isn't what I truly want for the semi-solid, so I'm gonna go get Periwinkle. And I am gonna add about, just about an eighth of a teaspoon maybe. Yeah, we're going to get some water into a jar and we're going to test this out first. I bet Kirsten is so proud of me. I'm being so cautious right now. Usually I'm just like, bleh, bleh, bleh. throw it in. Not today. Sometimes you can hold these jars up to the light and you can see I'm gonna get my little paper towel and we're gonna do our paper towel test. Cause that is a good way of really seeing what you're about to do. So this yarn that's just sitting in the bowl, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. This yarn that's just sitting in the bowl with this um, blue on it, is gonna go smack dab in this little pot. And the cool thing is that blue is gonna show up as a speckle. Oh good, it's on two skeins, but hey, this is the skein that it's on the most. All right, so the blue is gonna show up as a speckle and um, it'll be just kind of, you know, a signature, never to be repeated again, special touch. Yeah, already I love it. I love Periwinkle. It's soft, it's beautiful, it's approachable, it's not too loud of a purple, and it just borderlines on blue. And look how fun. Let's get the speckle. Look how fun you can see the blue speckles. Fun times in the dye studio. So yeah, this is going to pair up with that pesky pixie um, self-striping, but I would just pair it up with the semi-solid and call it a shawl kit. And please remember the Casa Pinka hug shot shawl went live yesterday and um, you only can get the free code for the pattern by making a purchase with a qualifying independent dyer like me or a, a little yarn shop in your area. So please be a patron to their stores or online in our, in our Etsy shops. Look at this. Piercing Blue Eyes is an all time favorite it's not ready yet. I mean, really, this water is still cold. It's probably gonna be another, gosh, 45 minutes to an hour before this is really even ready to be moved. So I'm letting the, the color do its thing. And you know what I'm noticing? And this is another awesome way to just have control of your own yarn. I want more turquoise. Who does not want more turquoise, y'all? Everybody wants more turquoise. So I'm gonna add it. Little bit goes a very long way and immediately 
push it in. Sprinkle and spread. Why immediately? Because this is not a sprinkle yarn. If this was a sprinkle yarn, we would have way less water so that the dye powder itself can adhere and affix to the yarn and stay in place while it sets. Okay, let's check on our other little creation here. Our earth tones. So our jewel tone was the periwinkle. Our earth tone, ooh, is this, this rust color. And I'm not surprised. The exhaust is mostly pink, really not surprised. Whew. Yeah, this reminds me of the color of the carpet of the house I grew up in. No joke. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna let that one just kind of go and soak up more of that pink to maybe match up just a little bit more with what we've got going on here. And um, yeah, so just remember when you're pairing up a couple of yarns for a shawl that has like, you know, every two rows is repeating, um, think about one yarn stepping down behind the other. So you want that colorway to really shine and then the other semi-solid that you pair with it cannot be too busy or you'll lose one for the other. So Janica and I did a little collaboration last week where she wanted to buy the um, Gone Forever colorway and then she chose like this beautiful aqua and she wanted some yellow mixed in, a little speckle, so I just added that on the just the very end because I didn't want the Gone Forever colorway to be compromised with a busy semi-solid, which technically is another colorway. So, Janica, I can't wait for you to show us pictures of that. Please post some progress pictures of when you cast on with that. I just can't wait for you to show us all that. Um, so yeah, next Sunday at 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Eastern, search for the Virtue Wool. I'll be um, giving away patterns from Lori B, two shawl patterns. Um, I'll give you details on this, you know, the criteria. And then my first, I think it's gonna be my first 10 orders, will get cute little stitch markers. This is the Kiwi, I mean, how cute. And this is the watermelon. And then um, I'm really actually interested to see who picks this one up because I think that with the copper is gonna be beautiful. So y'all, I um, thank you again for joining me. We will see you next Saturday for the same time, same place type thing. And then the following day will be my virtual slot. And remember, you guys are my friends, love you, and I just love seeing you on here. You do not have to make an order every time. And for virtual, there's gonna be some other people that you're like, oh my God, look at that yarn. I love the idea of supporting one another and thank you for your support. Have a great weekend. We will see you next time. Love you, bye.